I'm Sandy Eller for Vin News here at everybody's favorite trade show, Kosher Fest, where hundreds of manufacturers and distributors from all over the world have come with their best products, hoping they're going to make the journey from their warehouses to your dining room table. It goes without saying that Kosher Fest is a major diet killer, though that's not necessarily such a bad thing. So, are you ready to get really, really hungry? I know I am. All right, Kosher Fest 2015, here we go. When Kosher Fest first started with 69 booths and less than 600 visitors, I could only dream that it would come to this level. Kosher Fest this year, compared to last year even, has been such a significant upgrade. Uh, about 300 new products here, products that I never thought would become kosher became kosher. Uh, you see line extension in different companies producing different uh, items. You see new startups, people coming into the industry. The dynamics of it are such that uh, it looks like it's just at the ground floor. That things are just beginning to take off. And the, uh, the, the consumers in general are the, benef the beneficiaries of all this because all this is going to turn up in these, in these new big kosher supermarkets that are propping up all over the country. Um, I know there are at least eight or nine new supermarkets that are being built. And with 400 booths here, with close to 300 new items, uh, with 90 new exhibitors, with 21 countries, boy, is the consumer going to have choices. The challenges now are overseas, um, where they don't really understand American culture, they don't really understand kosher for sure not. And how many times do we get applications for kosher where it has shrimp in there Whoops. and crab? The future of kosher is not in the United States. You, it's not in Secaucus for sure. It's, there's a, a, oh, every product that you see here, most of the ingredients are coming from overseas in those products, which makes it complicated because there aren't Jewish populations, mashgichim, and culture and knowledge. The fact that there's so much kosher food is fantastic. It's just fantastic. You know, it's, it's easy to be kosher. It's not, it's not hard. Having said that it's easy to be kosher, just because a product has a kosher certification doesn't mean you should eat it. Because you need to be an educated consumer. And you need to know that just because it has some alaves on it doesn't mean it's really the way it should be. Tell me what it means to be the official show rabbi of Kosher Fest. Basically, I have to oversee all the shows at Kosher Fest, making sure that everybody besides the items that they bring, that they're certified kosher. Uh, anything that comes with it, like for example, a, a cracker that comes with a jelly, it uh, has to be kosher. All the cookie utensils have to be new or rabbinically sealed, and the cooking has to be done by a Jewish person. The wine has to be mevushal or poured by a Jewish person. For how many years has there been an official show rabbi? Approximately seven. And what was it like before then? Before then, nobody oversaw anything. There was all the problems that I said there were those problems. We even had people serving uh, not kosher meat, unfortunately which is why we have to oversee to make sure that everybody has kosher products. We have a fabulous, fabulous uh, Hanukkah cookie cutter set. It's a linzer, that and what so you do cool. is you take your typical linzer cookie, tart? your typical linzer tart dough, and then you make two cookies, and you pop out the inside, you put it with jam, and you sandwich it together, and you have a beautiful Hanukkah linzer. Nothing looks finer than our Keep Calm Eat Lakas platter. I love it's that. It's tempered glass. It won't break. You can use it for your jelly donuts, your sifkaniyot, or for your cookies. Or candy. This is our Keep Calm Light of the Night. It's a drip tray. You can use it for your candles, or you can use it for wine and cheese. Anything for Hanukkah. What's special about these muffin pans is there are two. One has a, a, a nun gimel shin hay, fineska do hayasham. You put the dough inside, and then after you bake it, you can connect the two sides Frosting. with frosting and you make a 3D dreidel. There's one kind of product that every year we show and this is a fruit wine, comes from Eretz Yisrael, passion fruit, great, great for Sufganiyot. When it comes to Hanukkah wines, uh, you know, you have much more family, you have much more variety of people, so you want to satisfy a wider variety of tastes. And so I tend to go towards a little bit sweeter wines. Chocolate leather is one of our newest additions. It is the healthy choice for chocolate lovers. Yes! With only 60 calories, or 50 in our original, um, it almost tastes like a healthy Tootsie Roll. LBD is the oldest kosher certification agency in the world. How long have you been providing kosher certification? We've been providing kosher certification since an act of parliament in England 
has established United Synagogue as an individual religious body and therefore we've been giving out Hechsherim for over 350 years. No way! Yes, absolutely. Okay, and what kind of products um, do you give Hechsherim on typically? We have two divisions. One division where we do raw materials only. That is to say, we are certifying companies that produce material that enters the food industry. We also have finished products, which is a separate entity, not my speciality, because I'm a chemist. And therefore, my job is really to investigate raw materials, which is what I do all day long, apart from visiting the companies and making sure everything runs the way it should. There's a series of alcoholic drinks that you can see there. All of them bear the KLBD logo. And they are all culture certified. We have here people passing by and say we've never seen a bottle like this in the United States. They it's want an unusual to. Shape. It is not just the shape; it's also the drink itself, which is quite unusual. And we have, uh, of course, the Hashkoch on these places, and it's spreading out as the clientele are aware now that these products are actually kosher and they can be obtained even in the United States. This is actually pure fruits and vegetables. There's we've, vegetables in there too? Uh, in some of them, there are. In fact, in the one I'm holding, there's carrots. We flash freeze it when it's at its freshest. We bring it down to about 50 degrees below zero. We cut it at that temperature. We process it in a cold room with a patented technology that... With, with nitrogen. With nitrogen. Uh, once it's frozen, we put it on our processing line. The magic of it is that it's soft. Okay, all the other frozen pops you've had is actually from concentrate, from purees, and so it's water, and it's hard like an ice cube. We received a patent on this because it's soft fruit, and so it's very palatable, and also it metabolizes easier and faster in your stomach. I'm talking to Ari Klein of Klein's Ice Cream, and we are standing in front of the original Klein's Ice Cream truck. There's a sign inside, reserved 1954 Chevy truck parking. The truck is a 60-year-old truck. Mazzetti started the business in 1955, and According to our information, the truck is, uh, was a Brooklyn guy owned the truck, we tracked it down, and according to the documents, we assume that this is the truck that Zaidi drove it. What prompted you, Zaidi, to start the ice cream business? Uh, he was, uh, was no call of a stroll ice cream at that time in, uh, in, in America, and he was used to, to in Europe that, uh, you know, people you were eating call of a stroll ice cream, he came to America, and people were eating just ice cream off the shelf, non call of a stroll. I don't think he did open the business in order to be rich or to be famous. He just opened up business to people, the kids to eat chalav ice cream. His lady would come down the block ringing the bell? Yes, but it wasn't with the machine, it was with the hands. By hands. And you have like, you have like a thing to pull and it's just, uh, just manual. Barbecue is a, is a big thing now, the big trend, smokehouse. Uh, Izzy's Barbecue, it's been around for about six months, is huge now. Um, right? Expanding to a bigger location, they couldn't hold the amount of seats they had. Just wasn't it was too much of a weight. So uh, they're expanding next door. So it's very exciting. Uh, there's a new place called Gray's uh, in the Five Towns, a smokehouse that just opened up. So that's very big. Uh, and they have in South uh, in Lakewood. There's a, a smokehouse that's all that. So that's very big right now. Uh, burgers are very big. Also, it's a big trend. Uh, Boof and Bun in Cran Heights. Uh, a lot of obviously Gotham Burger and Joseph Dream Burger and. Prime Burger, Papa Jacobs just opened up in Vegas. So a lot of new restaurants opening up um, in, in California. There's always new places in, in LA. The consumer's palate is more educated, is more sophisticated. They're demanding more, whether it's from social media, from our, you know, Facebook platforms, or um, you know, the Food Network. But people are demanding more. The restaurants are seeing that, and they're just putting out some great products, great ingredients. Our product. Uh is an exciting product where we can put our character into the product what we do. We're artists and we are able to bring out talents and put them into a beautiful food art form which can really transcend into a most beautiful end product. Our wall is unique. We wanted people to see a real true character of who we are, the owners. We didn't just take a picture of a backdrop. We used the actual live product to really present a beautiful product here today. Right now, there are 1,300 pretzels hanging on this wall behind us. In our booth here today are over 5,000 pretzels for samples for people to taste and take home with them. We can do anywhere between 25,000 to 50,000 pretzels a month. Many of our competitors use just a white and chocolate-based pretzel and then sprinkle on top of it that color. We use the actual coating of the color pretzel that you're seeing here on the display. You're seeing here a yellow-coated pretzel. You're seeing here a green-coated pretzel with the topping of that individual pretzel. So you're getting a real product, not 
color coded just to make it look like that color. We get a greater pop in what we do and the variety that we can offer here between Jimmy's, crystals, pearls, sanding sugars, drizzled pretzels really separates us apart from the rest of the marketplace. We recently launched a barbecue pulled beef brisket. It is nitrite free, it's gluten free, it's MSG free, there's no fillers, no byproducts, and there's no artificial ingredients. So I said a lot of things it doesn't have. Let me tell you what it does have. It has premium quality brisket that we cook and we pull apart. We shred it with our own barbecue sauce. It has a very big flavor. It's a little tangy, slightly sweet. It's a very delicious product that is very versatile. You can eat it as is. You can serve it on a sandwich, in a taco. You can make a lettuce wrap with it. You could put it in an egg roll. We're very honored and humbled to have won not only best in category for the product here at the Kosher Fest new product competition, but best in show as well. Um, and we're doing samples of it here, and uh, people seem to be really enjoying it. Um, our products are, uh, uh, the barbecue brisket as well as our other products are available nationwide in stores. We actually have a store locator on our website, jacksgourmetkosher.com, where people can go, put in their zip code, their city, their state, and find the stores near them that carry our products. Exactly. And if that doesn't work, if you don't have a store near you or you don't want to go to a store, you can go to our website, jacksgourmetkosher.com, and buy it directly there, and we'll ship it to you.